sub-questions narrow the central question in a qualitative research proposal into specific areas to be studied. They are a critical step in planning your research because they help you get really clear about what it is you want to know. In this video, I am going to show you how to write your sub-questions for your qualitative research proposal. Once you develop and refine your central question, it is time to work on your sub-questions. Sub-questions need to be open-ended, few in number, and direct the central question into specific areas to be studied. Think about it like dividing up the central phenomenon. If my central question was, what is the meaning of confidence for nursing students in the clinical setting? I would think about more specific areas that confidence could have meaning for nursing students in the clinical setting. Like the central question, what or how should begin the question? Sub-questions also need to be congruent with the methodology selected for the study. In this example, the central phenomenon is most congruent with phenomenology. As the focus of this approach is exploring and establishing the essence of meaning of confidence for participants. The best trick to come up with sub-questions is to imagine myself in interviews with participants. What sorts of things would I ask about? Sub-questions often do become your interview questions. Some possible sub-questions in my example include, what is the meaning of confidence for nursing students when they enter the clinical setting, when they're talking to clinical instructors, when they're talking to nurses, when they're talking to other students? How does feeling confident change how a nursing student would act in the clinical setting? How does feeling confident influence nursing students' clinical decision making? I would think about the activities, responsibilities, and roles and interactions nursing students may have. Then I would brainstorm the questions that I might ask participants. From this brainstormed list of questions, I would pick out the ones I really want to understand. Creswell, in his many books, suggests a maximum of five to seven sub-questions. Instead of looking at the meaning of confidence in a variety of situations, I may want to break down the concept of confidence itself. In this case, sub-questions could be, but they don't need to be, informed by a theory or model of competence. It is expected in qualitative research that questions will evolve throughout the research process. As I'm interviewing participants, I might come up with more questions that I want to ask, and that's okay. The sub-questions should reflect and be congruent with the methodology you have selected for your study. For example, a grounded theory will need sub-questions that break down the emerging theory. On the other hand, an ethnographic study will have sub-questions that examine how the behaviors, rituals, or other practices of the shared culture of the group influences the phenomenon you are studying. The process of writing down several questions, then picking the central question, and breaking that down into several sub-questions helps you pinpoint exactly what it is you want to study, which will help you refine the purpose statement and select the most appropriate methodology. I recommend that you work on the purpose statement, the questions, and sub-questions all at the same time. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or if you found this video helpful. If you want updates when new videos are released, please remember to subscribe and click the bell beside the subscribe button.